Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the special Nintendo Direct Podcast. I'm your host, Blazing Eye, and joining me are my patrons. First, we have Depresso Mode. Oh, yeah. We have Carolyn <laughs> 8392. Hey, what's up, everybody? We have Maggie Bajorn. Hi! And we have Midnight Castle, no longer the Goblin Slayer. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so, you know, uh, just as of recording this, we've just finished watching the t- Nintendo Direct, and, well, it was a very interesting Direct. There was a lot on display. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That was a lot to take in. Yeah, so we're just going to go through basically what was announced and talk about how we feel. Obviously, we'll focus more on certain things, like when we get to free houses, we'll talk a lot about that. But so let's start things off with Super Mario Maker 2 of all games. Finally. I have to say, I was not expecting this. From the initial, I thought they were going to port it. Because. I mean, this may be my perspective of time, but I didn't think it was that old, but wow, I'm c- complaining. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Because, like, um, like, you know, Mario Maker hasn't been out for that long, so I thought, again, they would just port the game. But no, it is a legitimate direct sequel, and this is a really good thing, because Mario Maker was successful on the Wii U and the 3DS, so put it on, you know, Nintendo's hottest new system. That sounds like a good plan to me. Yeah, uh, YouTube gave a lot of publicity to it as well, because you... uh, there were loads of people like showing off their experiences with it and showing off like different tricks with it, and I think this is a really good idea for them. Yeah. It shows how creative people are, and it's so huge, and they really push the game to its limits and bring out everything it has to offer. Yeah, I mean... You know, with this one, they're definitely going to do the same thing. Yeah, did you, um, anyone notice anything new or something cool they were adding? Because I haven't played the first Mario Maker, so I didn't know. I think it was Luigi I saw, too. Yeah, I didn't play the original either, so... Yeah, that uh, and, um, I believe one of the new power-ups that they showed off is they're putting Cat Mario into it, which was originally an exclusive power-up to the Wii U exclusive uh, 3D world, which is a great game, but putting that, putting Cat Mario in, in, like, the 2D style of Mario Maker, that's gonna open the floodgates for some very unique level designs, I'm here to say. Yeah, Yeah, it's also gonna, you know, because then they can, like, they got lots more vertical movement. Yeah. I do wonder how exactly they'll put it in, because it, of its design for a 3D environment. How That's exactly true. they'll adapt it. Yeah. But yeah, it looks cool. I mean, I might get it. I didn't get the first one, but, you know, um, a game like that where you could just... Um, just more Mario Maker sounds good to me. What about the rest of you? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm definitely I'm getting, getting as well. Getting that. Yeah. Oh, not, yeah, a, I'm, not a priority I'm, on my list, but maybe. I'm going to have to do some therapy afterwards. Because <laughs> some of those map makers, oh boy. Oh yeah, no, some of those map makers have a just a, you can really feel just the, the the feelings that they wanted you to feel when you play certain levels. Yeah, sadistic. Oh, you can feel yeah, the same much. Much. You can just feel it. Yeah. Okay, so after that, there was Ultimate Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Um, I used <laughs> to play the Ultimate Alliance games, but you know, this one looks fine. Is uh, fine. I don't have much to say. Anyone want to contribute? Um, I, I had my, my family had the game just colloquially. I didn't spend much time on that first one, but the time I did, I may have been young, but I could appreciate a, a beat 'em up action RPG any day, and with Marvel characters. That's the perfect combination. Fair enough. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. And with Marvel being as big as it is right now, I mean, this, this, I mean, we've got, we've got a bunch of new movies in the lineups for later this year. I mean, we've got the Captain Marvel standalone coming in March, I believe, and then we've got Avengers Endgame coming out in April. I mean, what better time to release a Marvel game during the height of all the hype for all the movies? Very with true. Thanos as its main villain. As well, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, to be fair though, the game kind of I'm I'm interested just because Venom's in it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah. Yeah, Does Venom want to eat your pancreas? uh, Maybe. No, no. So Venom is the star of I want to eat your pancreas. (laughs) (laughs) It's actually a Venom film all along. Oh yeah, absolutely. After that, we got a like a small indie game, Box Boy and Box Girl. Yeah, it's not. I, I don't think it's actually an indie. Um, it's it's um, but the original Box Boy was um developed by staff members at HAL, mm-hmm. and 
Uh, I think it was for the DS. I can't remember. I think it was for the DS or maybe just a WiiWare game or something like that. But yeah, I was reading. I was actually reading about um, other games that the staff at HAL have made, and that came up. And it's convenient enough today. And oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> I was mean, not I expecting it. that. It looks really, really inventive and cool with like how you do puzzle platforming and all that jazz. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it looks like a pretty cool game. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> you really get your mind thinking. Yeah, it makes <laughs> you think. Okay, um, after that, there was we got a Smash Bros. update, like three point is coming out, and oh, we they... saw Joker's character model, and that he wields some sort of like dagger type thing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's accurate to what he wields in the game. In in the game, he has a gun and a knife. Yeah. So I do wonder what they'll make of his move set, though. What do you think? We do get to see him crouch too. Yeah. What do you think mm. the 3.0 update is gonna? Do you think it'll include anything else? Like, because usually an update is more than just the new character. I think maybe yeah. a couple more stages as well. Maybe. I don't know. I d- I would say to... one stage for just Joker. Yeah. Yeah. Stages are a little bit hard to make, so one at a time. What's mm-hmm. the current Smash meta? Plant. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> plot. Really? Oh, Is yeah. he really that good? No, but everyone's it's playing fun. him. It's fun, yeah. Oh, it's fun. It's, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, but I mean, when it comes when it comes to like all the Smash Bros. updates, I mean, with 2.0, there was that there was that bit of surprise that they threw in with us with being able to do Spirit Board with up to four players. But then again, I mean, I mean, I haven't tried it out yet. But I mean, it. My guess is it'll make some of those um, harder Spirit Battles a little bit easier with multiple players. Yeah, but like the I don't legendary know. Spirit Battles. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, there are a few in there that are me. Doctor Wily. I lost, but the, I remember the one Spirit Battle legendary I beat just fine was Azora's one. Oh yeah, no. That was easy. The one that gave me so much trouble was Pauline. Oh, oh everyone that, yeah, hates that one. That one. Gotta wait for the AI to go brain dead. Yeah. Oh yeah. When I fought Pauline, she killed herself. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I was the same. <laughs> no, yeah, but I mean. I guess my guess is we'll probably get like some sort of like little surprise thrown in there. I mean, what it could be, I mean, I don't know. For all we know, we could probably get a bunch more spirits from recent games that have come out that they haven't been able to add at launch, but yeah. I don't know. So that's just my spirits. Guess. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> Jewel <Bejeweled> spirit. <laughs> oh. that was so just, yeah. next. Um, yeah, then after that, it was Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which I am very excited for because I love the Metroidvania um, games and all that jazz, and this one looks pretty damn cool. You know, just It like, does uh, look very cool. Yeah, the way you yeah. can like, do the different puzzle solving, the anti-gravity, it just looks really, really awesome because I even loved Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, the NES one. That was so much fun. So this, I'm really, really excited to see what comes of it in the end. Even if it's not very innovative, it's just as long as it's a good Metroidvania. I mean, it, again, it go- just goes down to the issue of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so that's pretty much what I, anyone else got anything to say? I will I say they had, a, they had a little section that looked like a, a laser wisp from Sonic. Yeah. Colors. <laughs> yeah. We also had the thing we can customize Miriam and she looked like Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't uh, any any Ooh. kind of game customization which allows you to make your get characters f- characters skin tone green, you know someone is going to do it. Yeah, yeah. Whether exactly. it be Dark Souls or whatever, yeah. it will be done. <laughs> One day we'll have Shrek and Fire Emblem. <laughs> oh, <stop. laughs> and then he'll then marry. And then he'll marry. You know, God knows who. <laughs> Shrek Corin. Oh, you're expecting Prince Charming. This <laughs> <laughs> is like Xander, Xander as Pin- Prince Charming. Yes. No. No. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh yeah. But no, I, I I haven't played too many games like that one. But I'm not gonna lie, it did pique my interest a, just just a bit, just a little bit. So I might give I might look into it. Featuring Avil as Donkey. Don't 
When oh, you have like yeah. Pete and Ocaden as puss in boots. Oh no! <laughs> Wait, no, like Randolph or like one of the cats? Yeah, Randolph or something like that as puss in yeah. boots. <laughs> oh god. I don't like to say you that. anymore. Oh god. Uh, Should we move on? Another? Oh, very god, Captain... uh, probably, I don't know. Makoto. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, Iago. No. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Uh, sh anyway, should we move on? Yeah, so next <laughs> time, we turn Treasure Attack and more DLC. A game which I swear I've seen everywhere, but I've not fucking played yet. Same. It's just fun. It's just something you do on your own time. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, then we'll I'm talk about it afterwards. afterwards. It looks fine. It looks fine as it is. And more DLC, uh, you know, go for it. And co op? Yep. Yeah. yeah, with Toadette. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, so then we got Dragon Quest Builders 2, which is like Dragon Quest Minecraft by the looks of things. <laughs> yeah. It looks cute. Yeah, it does look I cute. haven't had much experience with Builders, uh, like, as a sub suit, but it wasn't that long that the. No, that was a 3DS port. Oh, ignore me. But yeah, it looked really cool. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, it does look pretty cool. I don't, yeah, I don't really have much experience with the with the Dragon Quest series either, but I, from what I have heard, the Builder series was pretty is pretty good. So I might look into it, but I w I would be lying if I said it didn't look cute because it it looks absolutely adorable. Yeah, no, no, no. We'll get to the adorable game at the end. We'll get to the adorable oh. game. But one thing I've been <laughs> this direct, there was a lot of focus on JRPGs and stuff, and the next game is definitely episode of that Dragon Quest Eleven. Oh yeah! It looks awesome. It looks fantastic. It looks so pretty. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. not a Dragon Quest fan, but it looks pretty damn cool. Yeah. No, and that and, and that is the thing. If you bring up Dragon Quest anywhere in Japan, people will start talking about it. It's it's apparently really big in Japan, and I've seen a bit of gameplay from eleven from eleven and. Oh yeah, it it looks like my cup of tea. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, um, if you go if you go around, um, this isn't speaking from experience. This is secondhand, but they have there's so much stuff in like the Akibara district, like in that kind of era. There's so much like the Dragon Quest slime, or yeah, it's as it's, like... it's as definitive to Japan as I I don't know really. I can't really find an equivalent here, but yeah, yeah. So that yeah. was a beautiful game yeah it does look it just looks like really big and epic and even though even with the really like um Akira Toriyama art style I also love how it did that thing where you could switch to the whole um snares um graphics <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> old school fans are gonna go nuts over that yeah here to say yeah it does look pretty damn cool just like a really like I hope a really big epic JRPG oh yeah I never played Dragon Quest game before so I'm definitely gonna pick this one up it's definitely piqued my interest yeah after that, they showed off more Star Fox stuff for Starlink, which is just like, you know, Star Wolf thing, so there's that. Yeah, I mean, Slippy. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> I literally said in the direct, kill Slippy. <laughs> I'm hit! Good! Yeah. Die in the hell, Help, help Slippy. me! How about no? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, so more stuff, just, you know, just uh, Star Fox updates, so that's cool. Alright, something that was new, it's a brand new IP from Square Enix, looks really cool, is, if I, sorry if I mispronounced this, Oni, Oni, Oni Kai or something. Oni, you Oni Naki. That's it. You, you yeah. skipped over one. Yeah. Oh, we'll you leave that, we'll this. leave that for you later. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, yeah, we'll, we'll get, we'll get to, we'll get to that once we <laughs> talk about Thingamajig, yeah. Alrighty, yeah, alright. <laughs> no, yeah, but that, that new IP from Square, I... Like the whole story, the whole concept between swapping between the realms of the living and the dead, and like, like it's something that I, I keep, don't know if it's like been done before, but it looks to be a very interesting concept with like yeah. finding lost souls and saving them from turning into monsters. Like, it's something like everyone's like anyone who has a negative opinion on JRPGs would say, oh, you you'd see that all the time, and like. No, no, you really don't. JRPGs have put some of the most variety out of any game. Oh like, yeah, absolutely. There's so but much yeah. you can do. Yeah. But yeah, no, this IP definitely looks like it's going to be a good one. Yeah, it, it, it sounds it, great already too. 
Yeah, it looks like Ooh. it's going for a more MMO top-down vibe, but I just love the art yeah. style of it. It just looks really interesting, and I, I'm always up for new IPs. Yeah, and it's not it's not turn-based, which means they can do a lot even even more with it. Yeah. From what it looked like, it was sort of a vaguely sort of hack and slash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Type. And <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So it looks cool. Okay. So Maggie, before you want to talk about the next one. I mean. Sure, I'll try and contain myself. <laughs> there was a bit of screaming when those came up, and I do apologize, actually, after the fact. But... So before that was um, the announcement that Rune Factory 4 is going to be ported to the Switch, which was an absolute surprise, and the number five. Um, I apparently got this information wrong, but uh, for the longest time, I thought that company that was making Rune Factory went under, and that their last game was actually uh, Forbidden Magna. No, I did. Act I was actually this entire time when I was being kind of close. I was trying to Google around, just like, wait, what happened? What happened? And I just haven't been able to find anything. But it looks like they're back, or somebody got the IP, or whatever. But Rune Factory Four is here, and I still can't marry Barrett. So what's even the point of replaying it? I'm gonna get it anyway. <laughs> My life is a lie. <laughs> yeah, still can't marry the one dude I've always wanted to marry, but just that's fine. And mm. Five is Five is in the works. I and I can't believe it because. Like, and even now, like, I was sending messages to my one friend who we became friends over Rune Factory, and we're both freaking out. Like, we thought the series was dead for, I want to say, a good five-ish yeah. years? A while? Yeah. It's been a um, while! So I have a little more information on what happened to... Okay, um, but please share. Uh, it's not much, but basically Neverland filed for bankruptcy, but they were... Um, but at the last minute, Rune Factory, as an IP, was snatched up by Marvelous. Um, and I don't know much about if it was their dev team or whatever, but um, yeah, Mar Marvelous do a lot of things. I wish I could be more specific. <laughs> but, yes. Yeah, okay, it so was, it was bought up. Yes, in 2014, I believe. Um, and the, and Marvelous have a relationship with uh, Exceed, um, the localization company. So yeah, this is this is all from them. That's amazing. Those two. Uh, oh. This is like the unexpected Like I, for everyone that's a Rune Factory fan, like it's the unexpected. Like no one literally expected this to happen. But holy shit, it's back <laughs> and it's. We got five. It's just like what new yeah. wife was and husband are you gonna give us? What new dragon are we even gonna go after? We did all the elements. Who knows? <laughs> new fifth element. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so as someone who's never played Rune Factory, I will say the fourth one, it looks so, like a really, really just cute, fun RPG and it has a lot of charm to it. So, you know, it looks like it's something I might invest in. And there's a fifth one, too. I hope this series does continue to pick up steam because, like I said, it's just been brought back from death. I don't want it to go into that hibernation state again. Oh, goodness. So it's basically like Harvest Moon, but you can fight monsters and it has the cute dating sim element and four was the first in the series from the start of the game, because two other games near the end, you could decide if you wanted to be a girl or guy, you could be a girl from the very beginning. Okay. So... Well... Dating sim elements, you sold me already. ...type of game, actually, because she really enjoys Harvest Moon. Yeah, it's really cute. Yeah. Okay. When I, when I said Marvelous did ever did whatever, yeah, they basically do everything. Holy crap. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was cool. So, and, like, um... And then after that, we had Yoshi's Crafted World. Like, there's got a demo coming out. Uh, I'm not a big Yoshi fan, but it looks... Again, it looks just really cute. And it had the little Labo thing. That's adorable. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, as somebody who has played Yoshi's Woolly World on the Wii U, I can definitely say that... Well, I, I love Woolly World. It's probably one of my favorite games on the Wii U just because of how adorable it is. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, needless to say, Crafted World, it's definitely got my interest. It's... It like as we saw, charming. we saw, yeah, we saw all that stuff back, back at um, e back during E3, and then we got nothing on it. Kind of like a certain some we're gonna be talking about later, but anyway. But yeah, no, the the name apparently got list accidentally listed on the eShops. So we're like, okay, mm -hmm. Crafted World, that sounds promising, and now we're seeing more of it. It, it looks so cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, I've... so. Now, let's get to what pretty much all of you tuned in for. Let's get to the main meat of the direct. <laughs> Fire on the Free Houses, we have more info! It's not a fever dream! Finally. <laughs> yeah. 
I think uh, it was kind of a fever dream because no, it was. I don't think anyone was expecting what we got. Oh no! I I I I I I agree with that. I mean, okay, so basically, from the start, we learned that you know, three houses. There's three major houses ruling the continent. You know, that's pretty cool. And we have, you know, the Avatar is back. It's it looks like it's not going away. Yeah. What do I like about? No, I want to point this out. When you choose which one, it says select a four, which I just find hilarious. Yeah. I think that's so who you want to take four of. A vague localization thing. And I like how the, how they look different compared to, you know, like the likes of Robin and Corn. Yeah, These two yeah, actually yeah, look so very different. Swap, you know, as if they just swapped a hair palette. Yeah. So yeah, we have a new avatar which does look cool. But what's interesting is that the avatar's story is he's a mercenary and he even like has a father figure, so it's Avatar Ike basically. Yeah, I thought it was Ike as soon as I saw it. Yeah, that's we know what yeah, yeah, that dad is not living. Yeah, I was gonna say we know what's gonna happen. Fight your dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, my you're a parent immediately went. Yeah, yeah, my mind immediately went. It's like I'm like, oh, sweet Avatar Ike. This is gonna be, oh god. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, so the basic idea of the game is you're got to instruct the students of each house, and the game as a whole looks to be going for a more like job class, ma like management type thing um, with Fire Emblem, which I think is going to be really interesting because even though obviously management is a big part of Fire Emblem, I think this one puts a lot more focus on you know which classes you want to assign, how you raise your units. So that's gonna, I think it's gonna be really interesting, probably a bit more tactical if you know what I mean. Oh mm. yeah, absolutely. Maybe an evolu- I think- I think it, what it was trying to insist was an evolution of, um, Shadows of- or the Gaiden slash Shadow of Valencia's Villager. Yeah. So, uh, giving you that option, uh, playthroughs can be completely different, basing- based on how you go with each character. Yeah. Also, weapon arts are back. Thank oh you. my god. My favourite part of- Shadows of Valencia is Joe Return, so I'm happy. Oh, no, yeah, I'm very excited for that. I mean, the weapon arts were a very, very unique thing that got implemented into Gaiden and, well, Shadows of Valencia, but still, oh my gosh, they, they added so much diversity, so much more strategy, and the fact that they're bringing them back, oh, we're in for a treat. Yes, we are. Uh, not it, to... sorry. Are you going to say something, Maggie? It looks. I, it, it honestly kind of reminds me a little bit of Valkyrie Chronicles. I think the second one, where like they're putting in a military school setting, which is weird, but yeah. it looks. It, it's kind of like breathing something new in. Yeah. And yeah, it it does not look like this standard evil king dragon person. I mean, thing. that might happen last yeah. minute. I mean, it, we little we lo we know very little, but <laughs> let's keep it that way. Because it's like um. The whole thing, the whole style of the game is a lot more, you know, militaristic. You know, they've got the uniforms. Yeah, and you know, I like you know, that. Yeah. And they're split into different classes and all that jazz. But it's also interesting because it's less about, oh, we've got to stop this evil force. It more looks like we're the ones in power and we've got to keep everyone, you know, under our thumb in like a, yeah. um, you know, that type of thing. So it might be interesting, like, kind of like what Conquest did where we're the oppressors, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I guess kind of. In a sense, maybe, maybe well, I wouldn't say oppressor. I would say more like the peacemaker. Yeah, the, well, yeah, peacemaker. But maybe we realize, like, maybe the story is realizing maybe this peace we speak of, you know, isn't perfect. It's not. Yeah. Also, I mean, joining the Blue Lions for. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> put the, put the picture of the, the little thing of like Dimitri. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see, everyone's just gonna go with Edelgard. Am I? Am I the only Claude supporter here? Sorry, man. Yeah. No, you are it's not. God or Dimitri. Claude yes. <laughs> I'm not alone. <laughs> See, Dimitri just looks to me like Budget Ephraim. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking like motherfucker. <laughs> like, like Ephraim on a steam sale or something. No, wow. Is, he's Ephraim, but you know, it's if Ephraim and Xander had a baby. <laughs> oh God. Perp, it's Perp, no, it's Clive and Fernand if they fused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a nightmare. Which is, I guess what I'm into, so. so oh my god. So what does that make, um, 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 uh, what's her name again? So I could keep. Edelgard. Edelgard. Yeah, so it's like a fusion of Mathilda and Claire. Yeah! Yeah, yeah! Holy so shit! Like, it's, 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 it's an echo sequel! Yeah. 
Who's Claude then? Like <laughs> Niles and a good boy. <laughs> no, he'll be Gray. Yeah, yeah Gray is Tobin. Oh my god! Oh, it's just Tobin. The, this oh my god! Is the to echoes. <laughs> yeah, it's just the to echoes. <laughs> oh god. <sighs> But um, oh, one thing God. I hope they do with the story, I mean, the, one of the cutscenes showed that all three lords kind of work together. I hope one of the main crutches or, or themes of this game is eventually they're all going to turn against each other and you've got to pick a side. Mm. Oh. I yeah. mean, I already chose my side. Yeah, I know. I've chosen my side. It would, it would just add... <laughs> it would be good because it would lead to more playthroughs. Yeah. yeah. I don't see I it doing that, personally. I think I think the, like, the first maybe... 10, 15 chapters will be with that and maybe slowly you'll gain units from the other sides as well as you mm. have a more unified objective. Or what it could be is kind of like what um, Sacred Stones does. You start together and then you decide, alright, I'm like based on the story we've got to split up. Depending on who you're going with you get exclusive chapters. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that, but even so, Sacred Stones kind of lost a bit because of that. I, I, or, you know, uh, maybe they'll refine it better one in this one, but it definitely feels yeah. like also there's uh, going to be a lot more focus on like training the entire squad. So it's probably not going to, yeah. you know, they're really going to put focus on using everyone, which I like. This might be a more growth. It looks like you get your own little team for each side you choose. For each yeah. Side yeah. You choose. Yeah. It also kind of looks like because it's set in a school setting. I'm starting to think that like I don't think they're going to do marriage mechanics or anything like that, but probably like friendship bonding mechanics and. Maybe yeah. some sort of romance. Yeah, this might well, be young we can aspire. Well, romance is required. Yeah. yeah. Let me marry Dimitri, point. please. Yeah. Please. <laughs> please. Also, like, this also might be the youngest cast of Fireman characters, so it'll be interesting to explore like how the story's going to affect all of them. Well, oh, we yeah, saw no. we saw in that in that video um, an effect of a bond. I think it was something about like Gambit something. I can't really remember exactly. I'm just going to have a quick look up. But yeah. And I think maybe if you have certain bonds, you can have certain, like, that's what those battle tactics might be. Yeah, so maybe yeah. Yeah, maybe that will vary and you get different attacks. Uh, like, the battle system they've shown, like, you have an entire infantry type thing behind you. Oh, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah, and then the other thing that I noticed is, like, they're talking about, like, you basically go from the mercenary band to being a teacher at, this aca at, the, at the academy. So in a sense... Your avatar is basically going to be the Jagan of this game, which <laughs> I don't know how that's going to I don't know how that's going to roll out, but I mean, as long as I can marry Dimitri. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think that would be fine because then it'll put more focus on the people you're actually training. Yeah. Like I said, I think it's like a game where growth, like, like unit growth, is more is more of a uh, focus. Yeah. So it's not okay, like, oh, no, so we just have high base. You're trying to just use bring that. out the best of these characters rather than the focus on just being yourself. Yeah. I'm looking I'm looking I'm looking through the um I'm rewatching it and I've just noted the bit after the like gambit boost, it it looks like that's a field event you can trigger, like a triangle attack. So like yeah, like um, maybe some special moves or something like that. Yeah, because right right next to the uh, HP bar is um right next to the HP bar is like a triforce symbol. Yep. And it looks to me like that might be uh, that might be like three units with a bond, and you can like trigger a try uh, a form of triangle attack. Yeah, there might and be also, more emphasis on team synergy there. So instead of just like yeah. trying to solo with one really good unit, maybe they really want to emphasize. <laughs> no, if you've got the team spread out, you can do these special event things. Yeah. yeah. So everyone has to become friends. Yeah. But I'm going to say the like names for the factions are very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah. So it looks—it okay. does look like a very interesting firing game that's going for a different approach. I'm excited for this because it looks like it's trying to be different, but obviously not too different. And we yeah. finally got yeah. to a release date, July 26th, which I'm cool with because I—I was hoping they didn't release it in spring just because of the lack of build-up. I personally would have oh, preferred yeah. winter, but spring is fine, and I'm gonna—I mean, sorry, summer's fine. And I'm gonna try and get that special edition. Also, oh, the special edition, at least in America, money is like about a hundred dollars. I don't know how much that's in pounds, that's but probably eighty. I've had okay. the special edition of every Fire Emblem since uh, since Fate. So goddamn, well, yeah, I'm going to get this. Special edition, so it's kind yeah. of yeah, it's just yeah. kind of a thing. I just see how much I make tomorrow because I want to get it soon. I gotta say this: a lot of the characters have weird names that look hard to pronounce. Ah. Uh, uh. Well, um, Edelgard herself, her name is um, rooted in Germany, I think. Well, at least we can so... all pronounce Dimitri. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there'll be people yeah. who can't. 
And okay. of course, it looks like we got a new dragon too with Sothas. Oh, yes. yeah, 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 she looks cute. Yeah, the Tiki of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then the we don't know, it's still pretty vague, but now we have a better idea of what Free House oh, is about. Oh, absolutely. Tell you yeah. what we have, tell you what we have seen. We've seen this game's new brigand boss. Woo! <laughs> We've also seen the fact that Figgy can become a brigand spring, because that's also another theme about this game. They're really looking at different, like, class, pa class, class pathways. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking at one thing now. It looks like they have some kind of rank for our flag, and there's something called until class is mastered, so I don't know what that is for. Um, maybe that's... Maybe maybe they've got a job system. Yeah. Like, you level up each class individually, but you have your own stat levels, similar to, like, a Bravely Default system. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And then the other thing, I, I don't know if I was imagining... But d did I hear the game fully voiced? Because I could have sworn the game was... I could hear the characters I actually echoes, speaking. I think after Echoes, that's going to be the norm. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, the one thing that I think that um, Fire Emblem could learn from, especially with an avatar, is the way Persona did it, they made... Like, your character's name was in the dialogue, but, like, the other party members just wouldn't say your name, other yeah. than, obviously, Joker. Which, it looks like that would... It's looking they just like have to call you teacher. Yeah, yeah they just call exactly. you teacher. Yeah. Exactly. I am senpai now. Yeah. Oh, so um, what happens is you assign units um, their own infantry. You assign units their own um, uh, like battalions, mm -hmm. and that levels up along with them. That's really cool. God yeah. damn it. <laughs> Looks like in the lessons plan, you can set goals, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah and group really tasks. Put focus on... A, a, like really big team composition and stuff and management so it looks like a more strategic is... fire emblem game but i'm, yeah. I'm down with that oh no what? this is gonna be I, I have high what is for this that. trails of three houses uh and start joke no one okay. it's not three games <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, three God, games. i'm happy <laughs> three houses oh, yeah. version three yeah okay so now that we've rambled on about three houses so after that we got delta rune chapter one Oh boy, I love Delta Rune. It's mean, great. I, oh, yeah, wow. I I've only watched Undertale, I haven't played it, but you know it's free, so I can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> that was the best the show of... ever. <laughs> so good. Just dogs. Just dog. <laughs> Just Toby Fox. It, Toby Fox is a man this world will never be able to find again. There was no one like him. There was only one Toby <laughs> Fox. Yeah. Make it sound like he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Toby Fox will not die, he will live on eternally in dogs. <laughs> Toby Fox just programs a fully functioning AI no, of Toby himself. Toby Fox literally becomes a fox. <laughs> no, he's just seeing his dogs. I know, it's just, it just becomes a dog and he is the dog at the end of Silent Hill, <laughs> at Silent Hill's dog ending. Oh, that's a very doggish thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that looks fine. Then we got more of that Demon Ex Machina thing, which, Ooh, again, yeah. it just looks like someone really, really liked the scale combat in Xenoblade X and went nuts with it. <laughs> it looks oh, so much yeah. fun. It does look, yeah. It looks... Yeah, like, I mean, for, for anybody that's played Xenoblade X, which I imagine, like, all of us have, but, like, the scale combat, it was so, so much fun. And there were so many customization options for it. I am so eager to see what the limits are with this game because oh, I imagine there's going to be some sick things you can do with that mech. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I hope this is a big success for Nintendo because it looks like they were putting a lot of effort into this IP. And yeah. as someone who loves Xenoblade mm -hmm. X and especially Zone of the Enders, I really look forward to seeing how this mecha combat's done. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I like how they're actively seeking feedback. Yeah, too. They really want this is, it. They're, they're probably yeah. Gonna, no, this looks like a really big, like, long-term project for them. Yeah. Okay. And they're doing prototype missions, kind of like a demo. Yeah. Later today. Uh, and then they announced um, help a port of Hellblade, which again, more third party support. That's really cool. Yep. That's a very, yeah, cool. very, very good game. Yeah. And then and they, they announced like you're getting loads of like we're getting Final Fantasy VII, Cho Combo Mystery Dungeon, and Final Fantasy IX. So you know more Final Fantasy stuff. That's cool. Just yeah. a good RPG day. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, ooh, something. T 
Tetris 99. Yeah. That looks Tetris. interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nint- Nintendo's going, Nint- well, it might, it's probably not Nintendo exclusive, but even so, Nintendo's going, everyone else is doing this Battle Royale thing. How do we do that? Just, some, just someone, just someone walks into, walks into the room smoking a blunt. Hey, let's do Tetris. <laughs> Julius, give this man a chance. Genius! Give this man a ready. Let's make it 99. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. Only one winner. I can't. I. It's available today. I'm gonna download that ASAP. I mean, it, yeah, it, Tetris is Tetris for me. Oh but yeah. You can't go wrong with Tetris. <laughs> no. Yeah. But you know what the highlight for this direct was for me? Not even Fire Emblem. The new game from Platinum, Astral Chain. This game looks. Oh really yeah. Awesome. Oh lord. Oh my god. What? Like it looks like um kind of like um it's kind of like got the whole near bandana type hack and slash thing, but it looks focused yeah. on like like dual combat and just the style of it like it's got a psychopath type style with like um yeah. just like the world and it just looks really damn awesome looks like you're part of the police yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. The elite police one. Uh, I, ha- I had my hopes so good. I had my hopes up for a moment when I saw the protagonist so I was like yeah sure it's finally that thing that no one will know no do you know what I, no. I remember I mentioned this I thought is this uh, is this Shimogami Tensei 5 yeah when I first saw it mm-hmm. Yeah, I was hoping for a second, and just like, I, honestly, this looks amazing. Yeah, it looks, it looks really, really cool. Oh, yeah. Looks like you use a persona, so. I like Deku Kamir in it, yeah. so, yeah, and I like the Deku Kamir, and oh, this video's gonna get blocked because I mentioned his the name. Two, the two characters shown, I think those might be an avatar character on both parts of it, because they both look exceedingly similar. Probably. I wouldn't be surprised if there was an avatar, because especially if you could customize, like, the yeah. robot spirit that comes out. Oh. Uh, and also, Aren't also. Both in, like, the same cutscene? The female character has the most important part on any character design. Her assets. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the thigh. That's a that's a platinum specialty. Mm. No, platinum <laughs> get no that, but platinum love ass shots. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Platinum just loves everything. Okay, there are men and women of culture who look at platinum and they know how to show <laughs> off a good lady. Yeah. And oh, they, they, are, they are not shy. That, see, is platinum don't know the meaning of the word subtle. Nope. Oh yeah. yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> That's a word. Especially because, you know, yeah. this has got the director of Bayonetta and the Wonderful 101. Though, admittedly, Nano Machine is quite toned huh? down. Yeah. yeah. For, for, by platinum standards, so that yeah, doesn't mean much. Uh, platinum! F- get, please get Okami back! <laughs> uh, personal wish. No Persona, no Persona 5 announcement for the Switch, so that was actually yeah. a surprise, that. Yeah. It'll be here eventually, back. probably in the next five years. Yeah. <laughs> And, um, okay, so the, that game, to me, that's like a really cool highlight, like a really just fun, cool hack and slash. And the last game they announced was Link's Awakening Remade, and oh my god, that game is adorable. It's, it's oh, like my little, lord! It's like little it's like figurine a Link. Yeah. Oh, it looks, it looks... Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, as somebody that's played the original Link's Awakening, I can yeah. safely say I am very excited for this because more that game, more or less, is kind of a cult classic, and it's easy to see why. Yeah. But, oh, like the fact that it is getting re that it's getting that kind of a remake, and it just looks so good. And yeah, I agree. Yeah. Way too adorable, adorable for human but, standards. Yeah. Not only does it look adorable, but it's just a really charming game. But now that you've got the Switch and just so much more to work with, you're not limited by the Game Boy with buttons and what you can do. So I wonder what they're going to add to this game. Do you know I like how they have the Goombas too? Yeah. I I think they I think they might go for the Oracle games as well. This is just like maybe to a lesser extent, but I think they might um like add as maybe DLC or something the Oracle game. That'd be cool. Oh yeah. Because they run on the same they run they same run engine, on the same yeah, engine. Same engine. This look yeah, it just right. it was completely out of left field. I don't think again this direct was. Nobody was expecting any of this. I mean, yeah, maybe yeah, a couple. It was an unexpected but... direct because we got barely any like actual like. Again, we got a Mario game announced, and we got um, f- um thing, but we knew Farm was coming. Like again, what was it? Um, what was that game, Maggie? Some um, Rune Factory. Four and five? Rune yeah, Factory Four and Five, yeah, which basically nope, got revived from the dead. I didn't see the new Platinum game, Astral Chain, coming. You know, uh, you know, and there's a brand new IP, so there's a lot of new stuff, and I like that. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I feel uh, like 
basically everybody got kind of something good going. Yeah. yeah. So I don't, think, yeah. I don't think anyone is entirely disappointed with this direct. I mean, that's probably that one. There's drug. something for everyone in this. Oh, set. there's, there's going to be somebody that's going to be like, oh, there was no games. It's just like, okay. No, no, it's like no. There are no games that you wanted, but there are plenty of games. Trust me. Yeah. Just that. Oh, yeah. Just that one person waiting for that Hydlide remake that will never come. Yeah, I'm, just, yeah, I'm just waiting for that one person to complain. Oh, there's no animal. <laughs> no, there's already Give people complaining time. about Animal Crossing. It'll come eventually. Give it time. Uh, again, the, same with Mario the Three. They at least said, "Hey, they're still working on it." Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Give, you know, you know, probably wait until like s like a summer direct, and then they'll announce, or like uh, like a like a Nintendo E three type event, then they'll announce all the big stuff. I yeah. think oh, yeah. 2019 they're might be their my big favorite year E three. So they far. they will never not do that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's the Nintendo Direct. Um, overall, it was a surprising direct, but I enjoyed it, and we got like it wasn't too long. We got some nice information. We got some really cool new stuff. Um, what about each of you? What did you all think? It was great. I, I loved everything in there. It was a lot of surprises, a lot of cool stuff that I, I definitely want to try out, like Astral Train, you know, Damon X Machina, you know, Onikani, Onikaki, whatever it's called. Yeah, that. <laughs> it just looks all fun. Yeah. And I can't wait to, you know, try to get them all, especially now I can actually try a Dragon Quest game for the first time, and I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, oh, you I'm have really fun. glad with the amount of third party support that is going to the Switch, especially yeah. with new stuff. Oh yeah, oh, it's just... Dream Factory is alive, and so am I. That's all I can say. <laughs> I'm beyond happy. Yeah. Oh, that this direct was. It, I. Uh, I've I've already said it was unexpected to me, but there's so much out of this which has just gone far and beyond what I thought Nintendo could do. And I know the Switch was Nintendo's way of basically finding that global appeal again. But by by doing all this stuff, they've done their absolute best to get as many people interested and as many people buying a Switch. Yeah. I just wonder what... Because they said they'd do something with Nintendo Online. Yeah, fix the uh, damn thing. Give <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Smash a little more to that. Splatoon dedicated service, for fuck's sake. I mean, for uh, there's, I mean Sm Splatoon does have dedicated servers, though. I, hear, I heard it didn't. Oh, I thought it did. Uh, oh, I well. I Smash does. Yeah. I absolutely love yeah. this. Yeah. No, I'm in this. I'm kind of in the same boat as Midnight, where there's a lot of new stuff coming to the Switch that I'm very eager to try out. But the big thing to t I think to take away from this direct is that the Switch basically has something for everyone now. I mean, we've got so many great games that came out over the past two years, and we've got more incoming on the way. It's mm -hmm. like. It's going to be hard to find to not find something on the Switch that you're going to fall in love with. I mean, they're yeah. getting we're getting old classics left and right. We're getting all these brand new IPs that are trying to appeal to like different set audiences. But it's it's going to like I said, it's going to be hard not to find something on the Switch that you're going to be at least somewhat interested in. Yeah. And I think but, that is that I think that is probably the best thing to take away from this direct. Yeah, I think especially now because uh, even though uh, originally I wasn't happy that Switch was just porting so many games, but I think it, we've gone past that phase and now it's we're getting new, mostly new games. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's so many. There are so many new games that. Yeah. I so think we've got all the stuff from the past generation. Now we've just got the current new stuff, and I think that's really good for the Switch. But so anyway, that's you know. Let us all know in the comments what you thought. Like, what did you think of the direct? What were you most excited about? And obviously, a lot of people are discussing. Was everyone thinking free houses? But thank you to all my patrons for joining me in this um, podcast. It was a lot of fun just discussing this thing and you know, watching the direct. No problem. Yeah. Thank you for having us. No problem. I'm absolutely sorry for awesome. Yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, I imagine we'll do this the next time there's a Smash Direct or a Fire Emblem Direct or just any other direct. Yeah. We look forward to the day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when it eventually comes in the Fire I think the, probably the next one might be the Fire Emblem Expo and any news that comes from that. The, the remakes, the remakes. Oh, please give me. I can't wait for all these characters to come in heroes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Dimitri, Dimitri summoning session. <laughs> I'll have it. I'll have it. I'll probably do that. Opens wallet. Probably. All the money I'm flies at your phone. You know you're going to. Damn it, don't call me out. Yeah. Are you going to make um, Dimitri as support with Jorm? <laughs> I already I'll have Fjorm married to Fjorm. All right, what if you had another Fjorm? 
fjorm and fjorm. I need, a, I need a third fjorm for my Dimitri. Yep. <laughs> Love trying. Okay. Well, anyway, so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a wonderful evening.